Hi, I'm astronomer and author Jeff Bennett, and in this video I will give you a brief introduction to eclipses and the awe-inspiring experience of seeing a total solar eclipse through my book Totality, an eclipse guide in rhyme and science. As you can see on the book cover shown here, a total solar eclipse occurs when the moon completely blocks the sun as we normally see it from view, allowing us to see the sun's thin atmosphere, called the corona, around it. You probably know that the moon is much smaller than the sun. In fact, it is about 400 times smaller, so you might wonder how the small moon can block our view of the very large sun. To understand it, close one eye and hold your thumb out at arm's length in front of some larger object that represents the sun. I've used the styrofoam ball, but you could use the image of totality on the screen. You'll notice that your thumb does not completely cover your sun, but if you start moving your thumb inward, you'll see that it covers more and more of the sun until it completely blocks your sun from view. You've now created a total eclipse of your sun with your thumb. In real life, the moon is like your thumb when you've moved it inward. Even though it is much smaller than the sun, it is close enough to Earth for it to sometimes block the sun from view. One more note before we get into the book, which is that you, or your parents, will also want to get the free Totality app. You'll see a few screenshots from the app as we read the book. Here's the introduction page of the book. As it shows at the bottom, you'll need special eclipse glasses if you want to look at the sun, either during an eclipse or at any other time. Just be sure that you get them from a reputable source, such as the ones you can purchase through the Totality app shop screen or any of the vendors listed on the American Astronomical Society's Eclipse website. For our reading, you'll notice that each page has a rhyme, illustration, and a big kid box at the right that describes the science in detail. I'm going to read through the book twice in this video. On the first pass, I'll read only the rhyme, and you should try to guess at how it relates to the underlying science. Then we'll start over and talk a little more about the science, and you can learn more on your own later by reading the boxes in the book, which I'll hide for now so that they won't distract you. The book imagines that today is the day that you will see a total solar eclipse. Today's the day, it's finally come, I'll see a diamond on the sun. It happens somewhere almost every year, but rarely is that somewhere right here. We're talking a total eclipse of the sun, an incredible sight, second to none. In ancient times it caused quite a fright when people saw daytime turn into night. Today we know it's a great cosmic dance and predict its movements far in advance. Three dancers there are, earth, moon, and sun. When they line up, the eclipse has begun. This idea will become much more clear, knowing Earth orbits Sun once each year. While Moon orbits Earth showing phase after phase, repeating each 29 and one half days. These orbits are tilted, which helps to explain why eclipses do not form a monthly refrain. An eclipse of the Sun can only arise when new Moon and two orbits all coincide. This happens just about twice every year. At each of those times, an eclipse will appear but only for those who are in the right place, and it's not always total, cause we're dealing with space. If the moon is off center or slightly too far, your eclipse will be partial or just annular. And even when all is as it should be, you must be in the shadow for totality. The shadow is round and not very wide, along a thin path it rapidly glides. So if you'd like to see a total eclipse, find a good map and plan out your trip. When the day comes, the daylight will dim for more than an hour as action begins. Animals will start to act very strange. Patterns of light will gradually change. You can use eclipse glasses to protect your eyes, but don't take them off till the moment arrives. That's when you'll see the brief diamond ring, then the corona, a spectacular thing. You'll look up in awe to see stars in the day until, much too soon, the moon's out of the way. So be there with clear skies, and all is now set for a breathtaking view you'll never forget. Okay, that's the end of the rhyme. Now let's start over and talk a little more about the science. Keep in mind that I'll only just touch on the science here. You'll want to read the book to get the rest of the details. Today's the day it's finally come. I'll see a diamond on the sun. This photo shows what is called the diamond ring effect because it looks like a diamond ring. The diamond comes from the last bit of sunlight that shines through just before the moon completely covers the sun, and the ring is the sun's atmosphere starting to become visible around the moon. The diamond ring effect actually occurs twice, first as totality begins, and again, just as it ends. 
It happens somewhere almost every year, but rarely is that somewhere right here. This map shows the paths along which totality is visible for all the total solar eclipses from 2017 to 2045. You can see that a total solar eclipse does indeed happen somewhere about every year or two, but it's fairly rare in any particular place. For example, the United States had one in 2017 and another in 2024, but if you miss those, your next good opportunity is not until 2045. We're talking a total eclipse of the sun, an incredible sight, second to none. As the rhyme says, our main focus is on solar eclipses, but there are two basic types, called solar and lunar, because both Earth and the Moon cast shadows behind them. This first animation shows the Moon going around Earth, with sunlight coming from the right. Notice that the Moon's shadow touches Earth to create a solar eclipse only here, when the Moon is between Earth and the Sun. In other words, a solar eclipse can happen only at New Moon. This next animation shows that a lunar eclipse, in which Earth's shadow covers the Moon, can happen only when the Moon is opposite the Sun in our sky. In other words, a lunar eclipse can happen only at full Moon. We'll now resume our focus on totality. In ancient times, it caused quite a fright when people saw daytime turn into night. As you can see in this photo, totality really does turn day into night, so you can imagine that if you didn't know a total solar eclipse was coming, this really would have been quite frightening. But as the box on this page explains, thanks to science, we now understand eclipses fully, which means that science has turned ancient fears into empowerment that allows us to enjoy eclipses. And the same science allows us to do far more, such as to get pictures like this one from the James Webb Space Telescope, showing galaxies throughout our universe. Today we know it's a great cosmic dance and predict its movements far in advance. Science allows us to predict eclipses centuries in advance today, but as the photo and box on this page explain, there were a few ancient cultures, such as the Maya in Central America, that actually got pretty good at eclipse prediction. Three dancers there are, Earth, Moon, and Sun. When they line up, the eclipse has begun. This page shows how you can get a total solar eclipse when the Moon is positioned just right to block your view of the Sun if you live in the spot where the Moon's shadow is touching Earth. This idea will become much more clear knowing Earth orbits Sun once each year. This and the next page explain details important to eclipse prediction. I won't go through all of that in this video, but as the rhyme says, two important ideas are the fact that Earth orbits the Sun and the Moon orbits Earth. While Moon orbits Earth showing phase after phase, repeating each 29 and one half days. This page shows how you can understand the moon's phases by looking at a ball moving around your head on a sunny day so that we see different portions of the ball, or moon, illuminated as it changes its position relative to the sun in our sky. Notice that the 29 and a half day cycle of phases is about a month, which would therefore better be called a month. These orbits are tilted, which helps to explain why eclipses do not form a monthly refrain. Now if you think about what we've seen so far, it might look like there should be a solar eclipse at every new moon and a lunar eclipse at every full moon, but there isn't. This animation shows why. Notice that, as the rhyme says, the moon's orbit is tilted compared to Earth's orbit around the sun, which means that most new moons and full moons don't perfectly line up with the sun. An animation is fine in a video, but to show you this idea on a book page, I decided to use this illustration that imagines Earth's orbit of the Sun as happening on the surface of a giant pond. The tilt of the Moon's orbit then means that the Moon spends most of its time either above or below the surface, splashing through at only these two places called nodes. Note that in this case, we don't get eclipses because New Moon is below the surface and Full Moon is above it. But remember that the Moon and its orbit move along with Earth as Earth orbits the Sun, so, an eclipse of the Sun can only arise when New Moon and two orbits all coincide. When Earth reaches the position shown here, New Moon and Full Moon are happening at the nodes, so we get a solar eclipse at New Moon and a lunar eclipse at Full Moon. This happens just about twice every year. At each of those times, an eclipse will appear. And the same thing happens again when Earth is on the opposite side of its orbit, which means that we get eclipses about twice each year. Of course, this might make you wonder, if we get both lunar and solar eclipses twice each year, then why did I earlier tell you that total solar eclipses are fairly rare? The next page gives you the answer, starting with lunar eclipses. But only for those who are in the right place, and it's not always total, because we're dealing with space. This page shows that an eclipse shadow has two parts, a small, full shadow in which the sunlight is completely blocked, and a much larger, partial shadow in which only part of the sun is blocked. 
As a result, when the moon is at full moon position as shown here, it is possible to get three different types of lunar eclipse. This page shows what happens when I switch the places of Earth and the moon, so the moon's shadow is falling on Earth. If the moon is off center or slightly too far, your eclipse will be partial or just annular. Again, we see the two shadow regions, leading to a total solar eclipse for those within the moon's full shadow and a partial solar eclipse for those within the much larger partial shadow. There's also a third possibility, called an annular eclipse, which happens because the moon is not always exactly the same distance from Earth. If a solar eclipse happens when the moon is relatively far, then the moon won't quite be able to block the entire sun, so you can end up seeing a ring of sunlight around the moon. This is what some places in the United States saw in October 2023. And even when all is as it should be, you must be in the shadow for totality. So here we see the map for the 2024 eclipse. Notice a fairly large region gets a partial eclipse, but you have to be in the narrow path of the full shadow to see totality. The shadow is round and not very wide. Along a thin path, it rapidly glides. This photo shows that from space, you can actually see the moon's shadow on Earth. So if you'd like to see a total eclipse, find a good map and plan out your trip. So as the rhyme says, if you want to experience totality, you'll need to make sure you get to the path of totality. The images shown here show how you can use the totality app to help you plan. When the day comes, the daylight will dim for more than an hour as action begins. As the rhyme says, on eclipse day you'll see sunlight gradually dim as the moon covers more and more of the sun. Animals will start to act very strange. Patterns of light will gradually change. The changing sunlight will also cause lots of other interesting patterns of light, and animals often also react to the coming of darkness in the daytime. You can use eclipse glasses to protect your eyes, but don't take them off till the moment arrives. This page focuses on eye safety. Looking up at even a little sliver of the sun can damage your eyes, so if you want to look up toward the sun during an eclipse, you must have safe eclipse glasses. The only time it is safe to look toward the sun without them is during totality, because that is the only time when no sunlight is reaching your eyes at all. That's when you'll see the brief diamond ring, then the corona, a spectacular thing. When the diamond ring occurs and totality begins, you can take off the eclipse glasses and you'll see the sun's corona. Of course, to your eyes it won't look quite as spectacular as in this photo, but it will still be amazing, as the next page shows. You'll look up in awe to see stars in the day, until much too soon the moon's out of the way. So be there with clear skies and all is now set for a breathtaking view you'll never forget. And with that, I hope you are excited to see a total solar eclipse. The book concludes with a glossary, activities, and a science summary. I also want to tell you briefly about an awesome program called Storytime from Space, in which astronauts read children's books from the International Space Station. The program was originally started by educator Patricia Tribe and astronaut Alvin Drew, shown here reading my book Max Goes to the Moon from the Space Shuttle. All seven of my children's books have read for the program, including Totality. As you can see here, there are three videos in which astronaut Steve Bowen read my book and does some related science demos, covering some of the same ideas we've discussed here today. Thank you for listening. I hope you'll consider reading Totality for yourself so that you'll learn all the additional science that we did not have time to discuss today. And hope you'll also check out some of my other books for children and grown-ups, as well as my textbooks for middle school, high school, and college courses. Please visit the Big Kids Science website to learn more.